I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just short as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. That's a good one. Yeah. So hopefully I don't die from uh, exhaustion, apparently. Like I did at the end of last episode. Yeah. Hopefully. I, well, I mean, you had chocolate. In yeah, between and recording I, sessions, I made um, I mixed up some falafel, so it's supposed to rest for a little bit um, before you make it, and then you'll know, throw it in the air fryer. Make some and make falafel a falafel tacos. taco. Yeah. yeah, I knew I knew that was coming. You monster! It's but really it sounds, good. It does sound good. One air lie. fryers. Just get an air fryer. They're like fantastic. If you want something fried, but you don't don't want to deal with oil, get an air fryer. Easy to clean, like no oil. Hmm. It's really good. All you do is put like a teaspoon of oil into it, and mm-hmm. then just hot air and circulates the the oil vapors. Let's and... close my incognito. Let's <laughs> um, clear your cookies. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, is that like a like a popcorn popper type thing? Maybe it's it's recirculating very hot air. And there's a timer on it. You control the temperature and all that. But you could put anything in there. You can do, like, steaks, chicken. Um, I use it for French fries a lot. I'll chop up a potato, you know, salt, pepper, throw it in there, and then you've got yourself some, like, nice homemade French fries. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's and also you... reasonably priced. Yeah, right? The really cool, reasonably priced. If you ever wanted something that – People would traditionally fry, get an air fryer. You don't deal with the oil. You put in like a teaspoon of oil, and to clean it, it's super easy. I mean, um, that seems like it's probably a lot healthier for you too. Yeah, than... it's like way healthier than than deep frying. Yeah, like that actually looks like it might be as close to healthy as you're gonna get. Oh yeah, no, they're they're like really cool. They're they're really good. Um, if you like. Uh, gravy on your french fries like a poutine style what mm-hmm. you can do is put a little jar of gravy behind the air fryer because they have an exhaust vent on the back and it'll oh. heat up if you just have a jar of something you want warm while you're air frying put it behind it it'll heat that up for you so this is this is uh men in their late 20s <laughs> <laughs> oh i remember we had a fantastic conversation on the way to uh, a giant arcade about uh, leaf blowers, we had a great mm-hmm. leaf blower conversation. <laughs> we had a good leaf blower conversation. Um, we definitely talked about taxes. Yeah, because I don't, I don't think there's a way that you and I have a conversation anymore in which school taxes don't get brought up. Not by me, not by me, but by you, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? I just wrote who I wrote a check to uh, three days ago. Uh, the board of education the tax collector yeah i i got that but i i pay into escrow so i don't gotcha. have to write the check the um what other great com- what other riveting <laughs> late 20s conversations do we have uh let's see i think at one point we talked about not being able to go to sleep late because it's hard to wake up yep uh, <laughs> talked about how our you know you know normal normal conversations we talked about disliking seeing people do Fortnite dances yep we talked about that too also we talked about how probably if halo had Fortnite dances we probably would have done them yep yep um, land parties we talked about we, we had i remember we had a bunch of land parties we did talk about land parties um so yeah you know riveting conversations for people who are not <laughs> on the edge of becoming old men somehow yeah in their late 20s which i'm not saying that 30s are old men i'm just saying that i feel like we skipped a skipped over a bunch of steps to becoming (laughs) crotchety old men well Uh, you 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 sent me a message saying hey uh we're gonna go go with some people 
to this arcade the day before New Year's Eve, would you like to come? And my first text in reply to you was, how late are we going to be out? Yep. <laughs> that was explicitly your first text. I was like, yeah, I get that, man. I get that. I'm just going to – I was going to use uh, something like Abe Lincoln Sasquatch or something like that as the episode title. But I think yeah. two, uh, uh, two crotchety late 20 men, the podcast is probably the name of this episode. Yeah. Or the name <laughs> of the podcast this this week. Uh-huh. Um, and as I said before, it's where uh, Brandon and I, we just kind of complain and talk about things that are mundane and uninteresting to people who are in their – early to mid 20s and uh especially if you're in high school there's yeah. nothing for you <laughs> there's, there's nothing. nothing for you in this conversation there's i'm sorry nothing. there's oh. literally nothing and if you're over if you're in your if you're over like you know your late 20s you'll probably just be mad so we're we're, we're narrow casting yeah. this one there's, if there's you're a... uh <clears throat> if you're in middle or high school right now just know it's uh it's all downhill from there. The uh, the the upside is that if you do want stuff, you can just sort of go get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but but recognize that just getting stuff, the price of that is you start to get fan- you get start to get just weird pains, <laughs> and then you start thinking, um, hmm, do I want to go to the doctor for this? Probably not. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I'm John. I'm Crotchety Brandon. Old Man One. <laughs> I'm Brandon Crotchety Old Man Two. Uh, and yeah, this is this is a podcast, I guess. So um, we talked a little bit about what this some one of the features of this cryptid <laughs> that will not be uh, named. Uh, but the long and short of it is, this cryptid was first seen. <laughs> it was a good one. It was a good one. Uh, it was first seen in uh, 1952. Uh huh. It was humanoid. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, actually, cryptid might be a misnomer for it, but we'll get into that. Uh, and its region was West Virginia. More what West Virginia stuff. Okay. There's a there's so much stuff in West Virginia. Um, and the craziest thing about that is West Virginia is a second growth forest. Like yeah. the forest there. So it's not like something lived there for centuries. Yeah. Like it's the past couple hundred years that stuff has appeared. Okay. So. Shoot. <clears throat> oh man, this is hard. We, we we've done uh I believe two West Virginia, maybe three uh monsters. We've done we've done two, but we mentioned a couple others on the White Things episodes because Yeah. I, I had to talk about white things in general. To yeah. do some of those, so. Um, you're saying it's humanoid, so it's it's it's. There's a few boxes that are no longer checked in my head after mm-hmm. you say humanoid, because I was gonna okay. say you had that like spider squatch thing that you mentioned, so that that's out of the picture. Uh, there's. I want to say Big Hoot because every time we do West Virginia, I always guess Big Hoot, and playing the odds, if I just keep saying Big Hoot. Then uh, I'm I'm inevitably one of the times gonna be right as long as you keep going through the white things book. Uh, it's not Big Hood who, and it's not a white thing. Oh, oh, okay. West Virginia, not it's Big more Hood. of a green thing. More of a green thing. Grafton monster out out of here. Done. We're not. We already doing did that it. One. Two. Um, it's also one of our most popular episodes. Believe it or not. I think it might be the title. Is it a... Uh, I'm going to guess it's another refrigerator. No, it's the Flatwoods Monster. The Flatwood Monster? Why didn't I get... I don't. I didn't know Flatwoods was in West Virginia. That's why. Yeah. I'm bad at geography. That's a problem, but not the not the central focus of this podcast. Uh, that'll be... Uh, well, well, let's see. Atlas, our second podcast. Because, yeah. you know, this is Cryptopedia, so it would be Atlas, because it would just be talking about ge- yeah. uh, geography. So I mean, I was never big on geography or the histories. I skated through European uh, history, um, 
because one, that's something I'm utterly, uh, well, now I find interesting, but at the time, mm -hmm. utterly uninteresting. Um, because I was able to have good conversations about Star Trek and World of Warcraft with my professor, so I think I got a few extra, uh, you know, a little bit of points uh, that, uh, you know, got the easy way out on that one. Hey, you my, play, uh, my... you play Cataclysm, huh? Oh, you're stuck at the, uh, you're stuck here? Well, I found if you do this that, uh, may maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll have an easier time, huh? 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 Maybe, maybe... Time. Maybe a few bonus points you want yeah. to throw my way? I remember European history. Yeah. My European history experience was nightmarish. Yeah. Um, because I took AP Euro. Oh, man. And my my teacher uh, had us write multiple essays a week. Like, I'm talking <laughs> 10 essays a week. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember writing them in the seat of my parents van when my sister was going to freaking horse riding lessons oh man. because i literally spent so much time writing essays uh-huh and then then there was one person in the class who literally copy and pasted wikipedia articles and got perfect scores every time no <laughs> so i did one. get a i did get a five on that exam though they which didn't is, do the though i yeah. forget what's called the website where you you so enter an essay and then it scans the essay and does basically a Google search. It was before that, and most of them were were. I wrote all my stuff by hand. He literally copy pasted. So I don't oh know. man, I never but, copy um, pasted. I did reword mostly. <laughs> uh, anywho, so Flatwoods, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Flatwoods is a town in Braxton County, West Virginia. Uh, it's in the United States. If you didn't know where West Virginia was at this point, we've done three episodes on it, so uh, I don't know. Uh, it's located about a mile from Exit 67 of Interstate 79. Okay. The community is extremely small. Its population clocks in at 277 people. No. How many miles? Not necessarily by volume, uh... but by, like, X, Y sort of it's it's a pretty small town i don't remember the mileage off the top of my head let me pull up the wikipedia article real quick yes because you got 200 people that's got to be a tiny little place oh, oh I, yeah i'm looking at braxton county i was like oh wait did i get my facts wrong because I, I pulled up the braxton county uh wikipedia which is 14 thousand uh 14 thousand people but uh flatwoods itself is like it's like a subtown in the county. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, it's tiny. Google, yeah, it's really, really Google tiny. Maps. There's yeah. like, there's. It's oh man. Okay, I'm looking at it. There's, uh, it's it, it, one highway and one main road. Yeah, it's one of those types of towns. It's got a. Uh, it's less than a square mile. Wow. It has no water, and it's inside the town limits. I know so, there's a couple uh, blue flecks on the old Google Maps. Well, the, Wikipedia says there's zero square miles, so that's probably that probably means that it's less than. Oh yeah, yeah, because they look like ponds. I mean, there's a pond yeah. behind Flatwoods Elementary School. That actually is an important place. They have we'll a post office. Yeah, and that a court that looks like that's really it. Yeah, pretty much. It, it was built in 1830 uh as a things. community okay i'm not gonna cut you off but i'm on google maps so let uh -huh. me list for you every business in flatwoods you sure. have the elementary school the community mm -hmm. building the post mm -hmm. office mm -hmm. and then you have here's the rest of all of the businesses um an antique shop a funeral home a gas station and a bar <laughs> that's all of them that's, that's that that sounds like a a small town yeah there's a, it's basically what uh so there's a place oh sorry in... there's a car wash oh okay well that's important um to the west of accord which is where you know which is near us uh there's the town of uh denning yeah uh my first job i went around there and help my uncle take pictures because uh -huh. he's an assessor so my first job 
we went to a place called Diamond Road, uh-huh. which is like way out in the boondies, and it had a bar. <laughs> that was it. It was like its own little town built around a bar, basically. We had to take pictures of it, but regardless, there's always a bar. Uh-huh. Oh, a dairy bar. That's the one bar in Flatwoods. So is it is this like I wonder if this is like the bar in uh, the Legend of Zelda where everyone drinks milk? Maybe I mean there's so it's it's called the Spot Dairy Bar and according to Google Images at least once you're inside the bar it looks like there's maybe two tables and there's one cooler that has six packs in it. <laughs> so it's less than a bar than a place that has has beer. <laughs> hey, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. Um it's not known for its bar, antique shop, and uh and post office funeral home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh it might be known for its post office, who knows? Uh it's known for an incident in nineteen fifty two. Which oh. which, by the way, was known as the number eleven story for the year. No. Uh and it like literally took the country by storm for like a week. So, September 12th, 1952. Uh-huh. 7.15 p.m. Okay, that's a reasonable time. I'll say that right now. It's not a crazy time. It's normal. No, it's not. Although, I did look it up. Um, there were three boys playing on the uh, elementary school playground. Um, they were playing football at the time. It was Edward and Fred May, 13 okay. and 14 respectively, and Tommy Heyer, 10. Okay. Um, they it was around twilight when these events happened. Uh, I did look up the times of day that, like you know, where the sun was in the sky, lighting and all that stuff on mm-hmm. uh, the sun calendar. It was like a website. I have a link to it in the show notes. Um, and uh, it looks like on that day, uh, sunset was at. 6 37 p.m okay and twilight started at 7 4 p.m oh All right. which basically means around 7 30 it's dark yeah so around the time of these events it was basically getting dark um the three boys saw a ufo streak across the sky mm-hmm. and it touched down on a nearby hilltop in the bailey fisher farm so Basically, they're playing football, and all of a sudden, a flash of light races across the sky and lands on a nearby hilltop, or at least beyond the hilltop, they said. Gotcha. Um, However, before they ran to confront the UFO, uh, they went back to Ed and Fred's house. Okay, Um, to, like, gear up? uh, No, they got got their mother, uh, Kathleen May. Reasonable. Um. And apparently there was a bunch of people there at the house. There was uh, Neil Lundley, <laughs> who was 14. Okay. Gene Lemon, who was 17, which I'm confused as to why he was hanging around, but mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, Gene's dog and okay. Ronnie Shaver, age 10. Yeah. I'm, I'm still kind of confused as to why Gene Lemon was there, considering he was 17. And the oldest boy was 14, which means that uh, I don't it, think he was in high school yet. It could just be a small town. is what, yeah, They could well, have just been like the kids, because all they have there is an elementary school. That's Those true. could have just been whatever kids were local. That's um, possible, too. Might have been. Um, One it, time yeah. in high school, um, uh, I'm not going to say real name. I'll text you the names. Uh, sure. Because I want to say real names. You don't want to throw anyone on. You don't want to put anyone on blast. Yeah, but uh, I uh, so I <clears throat> I was in a car with my friend, mm-hmm. and we we're gonna go play uh, go to someone else's barn, and and we we're gonna play some music, and uh, they go, of oh, I've got to stop by my house, grab my bass, and mm-hmm. an amp, and uh, you know I'll, I'll be right back in, and then they park the car, and I go to open the door, and then. I get a very serious look, and he goes, don't get out of the car. I'm like, what? Why? Well, um, 
there's you know how there's Tupperware parties? Go, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, yeah, you know. Well, they're having a dildo party. Uh <laughs> I think you've told me this story before. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? He was, yeah, a lady showed up with a suitcase and they're showing stuff off. <laughs> so I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, I'll hang out here. You'll go get the gear. <laughs> you burp the dildo. Yeah, yeah. I was also very curious. <laughs> I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> I kind of I kind of want to know what the mechanisms of the dildo party are. Uh, the mechanisms? Like like how does it work? Like, well, no. I mean like well, imagine somebody shows up, right? Cuz it like um with just a suitcase filled with dildos. Yeah, sort of like how how there's like the makeup like the Avon makeup lady, yeah. Like will show up, and there's like all this different stuff, and you can look at the makeup and and try it and see, like, oh, do I like this color? What? I imagine they show up with basically a suitcase of stuff and uh, go over the features and uh, go over what options are available for all of them. Um, so there's two important questions. I imagine there's a little bit of pretending they're lightsabers. I hope. I mean, but there's two. It's the only reasonable thing. There's two what? There's a lot of reasonable things involved yeah. with dildos. But there's two questions that I have. One. Yeah. How much Axe is there? Axe body spray. None. Right. This was like a... Well, like, well no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. No. How much... How If if the person smells of Axe body spray... Yeah. And they have a Nintendo GameCube. That's not a dildo <laughs> party. Uh-huh. There's another thing, and there's a documentary that was uh, assembled by Derek Comedy back in the early 2000s. Yes. Um, detailing what that is. And I implore everyone to find <laughs> that documentary because it's important it, uh, to see the signs. Listen, if anyone's a fan of Childish Gambino or Donald Glover and you go, what was, what was he up to before Star Wars and rap? Man, this, this is what he's up to. Actually, everyone in that sketch comedy group, just about, you see everywhere, right? Because Derek Comedy produced Donald Glover, uh, the lead of Kimmy Schmidt. She's the girl from Derek Comedy. And you mm-hmm. see, um, I forget the, the, the blonde guy's name, but I believe he's in uh, maybe a few episodes of like, um, uh, they're, they're all doing stuff. Yeah. Oh, no, it was a very uh, it was a very popular thing, and it yeah. produced a lot of, like, legitimately popular people. All of them. I think I have their movie Mystery Team on DVD. You do, because I think we bought, that, we bought that practically at the same time. Probably, yeah. Um, I'm just looking it up real quick. Yeah, everyone's doing something. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, but yeah, so I'm about to read what I wrote, and this is terrible, and I fully acknowledge how terrible the thing I wrote is. Um, the group traveled to the landing site after assembling when the, the kids ran home and apparently screamed, Ah, we saw a UFO because we're 10 years old. <laughs> um, Lemon by some reports was wielding the flashlight okay and their objective was to turn the u into an i on the recently fo what's the i identified oh they're basically they were trying to identify what the ufo was you wrote that i wrote that john and then i acknowledged it was terrible but i didn't want to delete it because i wanted to own the terrible thing that came out of my yeah I agree with your comment in parentheses. Yeah. yeah. This, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. Turned the U into it. You wrote, like, you're working for a newspaper, and you're like, I'm going to write the crap out of this article. Like, it's, oh, man. I had a moment. Yeah. I definitely had a moment. Like, like you're on like you're on spec, and they're like, listen, once we get used to your writing style and your work, there's the opportunity to be come you know staff to be to be properly hired and you're yeah. like i'm gonna sh- i'm gonna show them <laughs> i definitely overwrote this one just black There's... coffee and, and and uh a fried green tomato pretty much it 
Listen, I wrote this in three hours, so. No shit. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. I, uh, well, I didn't know that I was going to do this until, like, Wednesday, so. Of this week? Of this week. (laughs) This is Saturday. (laughs) I know. Oh, I man. hate myself. Apparently, that's that's the wow. that's the truth of the matter. Uh so as they approached the hilltop, which uh, according to one report was about a quarter mile away, okay, um, yeah, there was a strange hmm. smelling mist. <laughs> um, did they describe the scent? They did. It was like a burnt metallic odor, which kind of reminds me of. Okay. Um, it reminds me of when I had a battery burnout on me. Like the that's the smell I'm imagining, where like you know you have the the circuits just go bad and it's like yeah, like that acrid, uh, metallic smell. That's okay. what I'm thinking. Of. I was imagining it smelled the way blood tastes. Like you ever get a paper yeah. cut or like cut yourself with an exacto and you sort of like suck suck on it a little bit. Yeah. That, or if you're chewing on the back of a pencil, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I never chew on the back of a pencil, but you know. I don't anymore because I respect them too much. I know you respect pencils now. You respect <laughs> pencils to a point that is, frankly, almost upsetting. Uh, so, after the events of this night, members of the party would claim that they were nauseated by the smell. In particular, the dog, who was a part of the party, who was unnamed. The dog didn't like it? The dog was said to have vomited and later <gasps> died. <laughs> after running through some like a low lying pocket of the mist. Oh man, I'm not laughing at dog eat doggo death. I'm laughing like dogs. I've I only did one fart that the cats didn't like, and I call it the fart. It yeah. like dogs. I saw a dog roll on a dead fish once because I was like, oh, I need to get this on me. This for for a dog to be like, this is not great. It's going to be pretty awful. I, I would assume as much. Um, so as they like begin to crest the hill, there's a pulsing red light that becomes visible in the distance. Um, Jean notices that there's a animal eye shine to like, like near the pulsing red light. So okay. he moves his flashlight to get a better look at the eyes. Um, the creature in question stood at about 10 feet tall. It had a humanoid appearance with a red, round face surrounded by an ace-shaped hood or cowl, right? So think like, yeah. um, kind of think uh, like the Queen of Roses from Alice in Wonderland a little bit. Yeah. Except I'm, taller. I'm questioning <clears throat> the, <coughs> oh, the creature's height. Sorry. Because I remember when I was a kid... <coughs> There were things that I thought were, like, so tall, and now I'm like, that's that's not that tall. Like, well, six foot, uh, the, like, jungle gyms and stuff, I remember being like, that, you can't climb that, that's dangerous. And now well, I'm like, oh, that's that's not, <laughs> that's not well, that bad. Well, keep in mind, um, Gene is 17 at the time of this, so he's a little bit bigger. Oh, um, oh sorry, never mind then. then yeah. Uh, uh, but also yeah. keep in mind, this is probably around 7.20, 7.30 that this is happening. And yeah. if you'll remember, it's dark now. It's dark. So did they just... The blinking red light also makes me think... Um, I don't know the area, but sometimes like radio towers or other things will have a slow blinking light on top of them to alert um, possible aircraft or just to say like, Hey... It, it, this is a structure and it's tall, but it's not necessarily like closed like a building. It's like a framework almost. Uh, they didn't say anything about that. Okay. Particularly, um, there are some thoughts that it might have been like the light from a plane blinking. Okay. Which is entirely possible. Uh, yeah, because they but, have two different color lights on on wingtips, yeah. so you can tell which one's left and right wing, so you can sort of discern. Yeah direction and width and all that while it's flying yeah so they don't go over it but it's there's a distinct possibility that it's not a ufo but we'll get into that later um 
So early reports indicate that it had a glowing green body. Um, but there's two things of that. There's two things of that that kind of make me a little bit more leery. Okay. Um, one of them is in one report I read, it had no color. Like it was just like a silver body or something like that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that kind of stands out to me about that is if it had a glowing green body, they would have seen the glow, uh, before the eyes probably. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, right now I'm picturing, um, basically Ben Kissel in a green suit. Man, Ben Kissel has been getting torn to shreds by this podcast. Did you see their live show? I haven't seen the live show yet. He's a giant. I was... Uh, I tried to see if the link that they sent me would work. Um, like if it was just a link you get after pay, but you can email it to someone. It, mm-hmm. it, it didn't work out, but he was drinking a Coors Light, a normal one, and it looked like the half size soda cans that you get. It was, it was outstanding. He is a giant. He's also hilarious, but yeah. Um. There, he also, the joke I made about the man being shot by a cryptid, uh, yeah. the man being shot as though he were Bigfoot, he uh-huh. made literally the same joke I made, too, so I feel confident in my, my joke-telling ability now. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, I feel good because that does that means that I wasn't, like, punching down at him or anything. Yeah. Because he took the same, he made the same punch at himself, so. Yay! Um, <laughs> anywho, Kathleen reported it. As though uh, <laughs> Kathleen reported that it had drape like folds, like kind of like a oh. dress or a tunic. Yeah. Um, and large claws. Okay. Although some reports say it has no claws and it's just an armless thing. Well, <laughs> okay. There's a difference between d- does it have claws or not, and <laughs> it doesn't have arms. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, 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 that's a wild variant. That's not. I could there, see people being seeing the same thing from different angles and and yeah, seeing it differently. But arms versus no arms is is a little bit. Much. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I've been having some problems by pinning down all the details on this. Yeah. Um. There's a pretty. There's a pretty famous reproduction that's in the show no- that will be in the show notes probably, and it will be in the uh, in the the version that we release to the Patreon. Yeah. Um. But the the general standard is it has arms. Gotcha. Okay. So, I think that's the most popular depiction of it, and the depiction that they have in like flat woods where they you know have stuff all over the place. That's yeah. the one they usually go. Gotcha. So, after momentarily being observed by the group, uh, the creature let out a hiss and glided towards them (laughs) with a, and I quote, bounding motion. Um, (laughs) This startled the teenage member of the West Virginia National Guard. A teenager? Which is Gene Lemon. Uh um, So much that he dropped the flashlight and fell over. Although... (laughs) That depends on which version of the story you read. Because in some versions, he just drops the flashlight. I'm going to tickle ya. And then he runs, whoa, whoa, and he drops the flashlight. He, he's extremely scared of tickle stuff. He saw the tickle uh, documentary on Netflix. And he's oh. just like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not falling into this. Yeah. Um, but regardless, the group ultimately fled home. Okay. Fair response. Yep. So, uh, Kathleen, when she got home, called both Sheriff Robert Carr okay. and A. Lee Stewart of the local newspaper, the Braxton Democrat. Okay. Which is what you normally do. You call the cops, and then you call the news media. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I saw, like, a cray, like a big old creature, I'd be like, oh, man. I, 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 That's, I could, yeah, I, 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 can I, I was a little that. harsh on her. It does make sense to call the news because it's like hey i found a wild thing i live in a town of 277 people i'm gonna get ahead of this story because rumor mill is gonna start going and it's gonna get wild 
Well, and then he can avoid the whole like, well, why didn't you report it right away? Why, you know, yeah. why did you wait a week before you called us? And although to be fair, she did report it as soon as it happened. So yeah, credit to her. Um, Lemon, uh, the the teenager Gene Lemon, mm-hmm. he would go with Stewart to investigate the site again, uh, and reported that the smell persisted. Ah, oh, the stank monster. Yeah. However, yes, and this is a big however. Reports differ as to whether or not the sheriff and the cops smelt the odor as well. Um, okay. In one report that was more credulous, uh, they did smell it. Uh, in the report from the Center for Skeptical Inquiry, which we uh, have in the show notes, and was actually a major source for this entire discussion and investigation, uh, they say that the cops didn't uh, smell anything they didn't see anything it was just you know a nothing burger really. is it possible not necessarily a skunk but there was spray um i'm thinking like west virginia big cats marking territory well i did read a report that said that the particular type of grass had that smell and it might have okay. been just because of the time of day maybe it was like recently cut or something like that yeah or it's the, some... the west virginia stink grass well no they're Grass does have a scent sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes it smells metallic, to me at least. Uh-huh. So it's entirely reasonable that it might be some weird set of weather conditions resulted in the grass smelling weird. And then mm-hmm. again, it also might be that the weird smell that they were smelling was something not even related to the grass or the or the mist at all. Yeah, maybe it was the dog. It might have been the dog. Maybe the dog as maybe the dog was sick with something and that's why it died. Oh, it old. farted and died. I've seen dogs fart and scare themselves so bad. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. Uh, my cat farted and woke herself up and was like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> I, I, I love it when animals scare themselves with their own bodily functions. Although, yeah. I do hate it when cats go to the bathroom and then run out of the bathroom as though something was chasing them out of it yeah. and then stuff flies out with them and then i had to go <laughs> clean it up and my night's ruined then anywho um the next morning they went back again to investigate uh the area and they found an oily substance and tracks near the quote unquote landing site okay um due to the nature of a small town however yeah. this is hotly debated um, people claim to have visited the site that night in either tractors or their truck. There's there's uh, one gotcha. story of a guy who literally was like, yeah, those tracks were my truck, and the oil was a little bit of oil from my car. Gotcha. I was going like, to say, if it's oil or machine oil, that could account for the oily yeah. residue and a metallic smell. Yeah. So, it, I, I think, I, I'm not even going to bother taking that into account into the analysis of this because it's a small town word travels wicked fast yeah especially when there's what like seven people in a party looking at something let's see one two three four five seven people one bar like yeah 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 Yeah. so that the long and short of it is there are so many people who are involved in this story and it's like a 30th of the town yeah so it's like a thirtieth of the town witnessed this event. So obviously people are gonna know. Um additionally, in multiple states on the same night, it was reported that a large fireball was seen flying across the night sky. That's Pennsylvania, Maryland, and West Virginia. Like some reports were saying it was going horizontal across the sky. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at this picture. Yep. And holy crap. It's... <laughs> Have you not seen the fla- uh, the Flatwoods monster before? Not an image of it. And oh boy, I fear for your search history uh, based on our earlier conversation. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. There are some holy great images cow. I found. There were some phenomenal images that I found that, uh... If you want to know what I'm talking about, maybe you just hit me up on Twitter because I'm not going to speak it. <laughs> I, might, I might send you some DMs. Wow. Yeah, um, they're great. Doing they're some great. Googling. 
Holy There's some great cow. images of this creature. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so this would not be the last time that Braxton County would hear of the greed monster. As we no, know. okay. Um, it was also known as like the uh, old Braxy and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it had so many. It has so many names. A Flatwoods monster is probably the best one, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, so I was looking at the Cryptids wiki. Yeah. On the Flatwoods monster, which of course, as you know, the Cryptids wiki is the absolute height of reputability. It has all of its sources cited. There's no stuff that came out of nowhere and was never found. I can never find anywhere else. That never happens. Um, all of their their reporting is extremely precise. So clearly, <laughs> it's my number one primary source for everything. No conjecture, um, no assumptions. That's their correct. motto. Yep. So there was a. It did have several uh, additional sightings before disappearing. Okay. Um, and as is usually the case. Uh, whenever UFO investigators begin to poke around the area, a lot of people start saying, oh, yeah, I saw something. Uh, yeah. The only one that I, – because I don't think any of these are true, to be totally honest, uh-huh. just because I feel like it's more like, hey, I'm, I want I want some time in the limelight. Like, why does Kathleen get all the, all the uh, attention? Mm-hmm. Um, there was a local woman, unnamed, uh, who claimed to have encountered the creature. Okay. This encounter was said to have caused her 21-year-old daughter to become violently ill and forced her into a hospital bed for three weeks. Oh, man. And not only that, this sighting was supposedly like a week before the uh, original one. I I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any other sources verifying this. I just thought I'd mention it because it's an aside and it's a part of the lore, although Uh I don't think it's a legitimate part of the lore because I couldn't find any primary sources mm-hmm. um if it is and there are primary sources feel free to send them my way but i couldn't find any so the day after the initial event there was a couple driving through the nearby mountain in frame town uh-huh. um their car mysteriously stops as they're driving through the woods uh, okay um they get out to examine the car walk around it and a sulfurous odor just fills the air yeah um and they Is get it back related and... to the car not working? I maybe. <laughs> um, they they get back in the car and they spot the creature. Okay. From the waist down, it had an appearance matching that of the Flatwoods monster. However, from the waist up, it was a reptilian humanoid. Uh so this image here looks like Davros from Doctor Who. It, or uh yeah it's it's like a Dalek like, like yeah Almost. so Davros is a Dalek from it from he's a Dalek um yeah. from I believe he from the cult of Scarrow but he from the waist down he's got like Dalek body and from the waist up he's got like weirdo weirdo humanoid body mm-hmm. uh and yeah so if you imagine a Dalek with the uh upper torso of like a lizard lizard boy yeah yeah so that's what they saw apparently um as they're sitting in the car it like kind of looked at them it left the area and then it took off in the ufo into the sky what yeah so um that's literally all i could find about the uh the frame town sighting which yeah you would expect there would be a lot more because mm-hmm. that's a wild claim. Um, and there seemed to be some more stuff. However, every time I tried to click on a link, it took me to like a malware site. Oh, exciting. Um, or it was like a book that I had to pay like money for and I didn't feel yeah. like paying money for one sighting that I got. I, I assumed there wouldn't be that much more. Yeah. Um, I guess supposedly someone drew the picture, like tracked them down and like drew the picture based on the description and stuff like that. But I honestly, this kind of smells of, Hey, something happened yesterday. Yeah. We now saw something happen. We swear that our car stopped and this is what we saw. 
Shoot. Because, because I mean, if you if you hear the reports, it's uh huh. Re- it's got a like a red face. It's got a uh, ace shaped head. You know, like if you're looking at the image, it's green. It's also silver. It has yeah. like weird, almost claw like hands. It, everything about it kind of sounds like it's the, Davros, a hundred percent. So Davros, it's just guys watch Doctor Who. It's Davros. He invented the Daleks. I don't think the Daleks is the inspiration for this because I think that the Daleks didn't appear yet at the time of the uh, the sighting. But it does, it has a lot of shades of Dalek. Yeah. Um. So that's all the sightings. All of them. All of them. There oh, were no other okay. sightings. Wow. Okay. Um. I when I was researching this, I was startled by like how much of like a barely event this was yeah as far as i knew the the flatwoods monster was like a big deal and like super popular Uh uh-huh um so i was kind of shocked by it and i got some theories for you as to what it was what was that but first we gotta take a little bit of a break Oh, yeah. Today's sponsor is Cryptopedia. As many of you know, Cryptopedia's underground research facility has many ongoing R&D projects, many of which I mention in offhanded jokes. But our R&D team, Kendra, has finally perfected the patent-pending Cryptopedia brand Bigfoot Tranquilizer Dart. These bad boys are capable of downing any mammal up to 800 pounds in just one hit. Purchase the Bigfoot dart gun and you can accurately reproduce a 2 inch cluster on a target at 300 meter. An adult Bigfoot will stay unconscious for 2 hours, a young Bigfoot for 6 hours, and an adult human for 30 hours. Now back to the show. There was only one real sighting. Yeah. Most of the witnesses are young kids. It was dark. The only physical evidence is easily explained. There's, like, next to nothing to indicate that this is a big deal. So, clearly this creature was ignored. No one came up with it. Oh, my God. So, clearly this creature was ignored. No one came up with any wild theories. Um... It was just a one-off thing, and okay. that was it. Oh, right? all right, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's some crazy cuckoo banana stuff about this. <laughs> so, the most prevalent theory is that the Flatwoods monster is an alien. Okay. Uh. There's one site, it was a black site, and by black site I mean black with white text. At least it wasn't green. Oh, okay, so it's uh, one of the good ones. It's one of the good ones. Um, And it was one of the most involved theories I could find. Yeah. And I will admit, once I found it, I stopped looking for theories because this already pushed my belief threshold to (laughs) Uh an extreme degree. And after I saw it, I was just like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not. I'm not researching this anymore. Mm-hmm. And this was the point that uh, John just was like, "Nope." So, uh, it was. Um, I think the this theory is proposed by Frank Cassino, and it was retold by someone on their website. Uh, uh, caveynessreport.com so okay um the story is as follows and i've reproduced this directly from their website because there's no way i can make a synopsis of this and it even be remotely coherent so i'm just going to give you their incoherent ramblings for a little bit okay so let's go for it oh i'm ready <clears throat> i'm ready for it so early on in the afternoon you see uh, uh-huh. September 12th, 1952, a USA a USAF fighter jet disappeared with its two crewmen along the Florida Panhandle. 
right? United States Air Force. Yep. 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 Um, no wreckage was ever found, reportedly. Uh, and even though the accident reports for the crashes were found just before and after September 12th, the fighter incident of uh, the this fighter incident, it, it couldn't be found anywhere in the military archives uh, at all. To cover the, up the record. Yeah, it's a cover up. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so the record of this incident had somehow been lost. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, according to the Frank Fresno, uh, according to Frank Fresno, four UFO had descended into the area on that day, with one of them staying higher than the military air, aircraft air, with one of them staying higher than the military aircraft could fly. The other three descended to lower altitudes where they were attacked by USAF fighters. One UFO was badly damaged and forced low to the ground, while two military fighters suffered critical damage caused by the UFOs and had to return to base. Huh. Other fighter interceptors were ordered to go after the damaged craft while it was being escorted by another UFO craft. You see? You see? That's why there were four. There were four, because if you had four, that means you can have people escort damaged crafts, and you can protect yourself from the, the American government, who's clearly fighting aliens. Right? Clearly. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's, the evidence is there. It's all there. It's just all there. Just, just don't think about it, okay? Just keep just stop thinking about it. So, the United States Navy joined in the aerial battles with jets Woo! from nearby aerial bases because, Get them, boys. you know, that joint joint operations between the Navy and Air Force are super common during non-war times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the combat over the Gulf intensified. The UFOs began to use something to disintegrate the military air aircraft trying to shoot them down. So, we're losing millions of dollars in this fight, clearly. Yeah. Right? The United States Army, because they're getting disintegrated by UFOs. Which you know, of course, there's there's records of deaths and stuff like that because this is implying that multiple aircrafts went down, and if it's disintegrating it, it's probably killing the people inside. So there's just people who just disappeared, you know, man, just disappeared. Probably probably other deaths. Um, <laughs> the UFOs seem to be taking only defensive measures, but the military considered them invaders of American airspace and did not know their intentions. Right, so they have to attack them clearly. The military did not let up, and after many attempts to down the one damaged UFO, unsuccessfully, 12 more UFOs descended from the upper atmosphere into the region, apparently trying to provide more protection and break up the engagement. Now, that, that wasn't the Flatwoods monster, though. That was a different thing that happened the same day. Oh. Because the same afternoon, after the just after the fighter incident— So uh, then is I, the Flatwoods monster— is it a surviving creature from possibly a downed UFO by the United States Air Force in a joint effort with the United States Navy? You're thinking on the right track. Let me get to it. It's almost there. It's not this one, but there's another one. Because you see the same oh, afternoon, an observation plane. Yeah. yeah. An observation plane, of course. Uh, had repeatedly run into trouble, reportedly run into trouble, and the pilot had bailed out over the waters of the Gulf. According to Frank uh, Freshino, the pilot of the craft bailed out as one of the UFOs was approaching his aircraft. Now, Frank also found that the United States military had a conversation later that same afternoon. So this is the third third confrontation in one day. A lot of confrontations with UFOs. It's important to know because you got to remember yeah. UFOs come in big, 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 big groups, right? So Yeah, right. Totally. Over the Atlantic Ocean and off the mid-Atlantic coast, there were several aerial odd objects which would not identify themselves they would not they're quiet they didn't say a thing right so we know what that means they're ufos because they're unidentified because they didn't identify themselves see see ufos so apparently <laughs> the four identified unidentified craft were damaged in the engagement no information was in available on military casualties because of course not they're gonna cover it up listen people they're covering it up Clearly. <laughs> so, um, three of these UFOs were later determined to have headed inland, apparently to either make repairs or get rescued by their sister ships, right? Because remember, their sister ships, they might have been in the Gulf. You don't know. We don't know. We don't know because no one, all these records lost. We don't know. So, <laughs> get myself worked up on this one. Uh, okay. So, um, a large identified craft parked itself over Washington, D.C. 
presumably to ensure that the craft were not fired upon any further. Because clearly, parking it over one of the most populated cities in the world is a great idea, right? Where everyone can see it. They, no they never expected it. there. No, no one, ex- it, no one expected it. So, one damaged craft was seen traveling across Washington, D.C. in the early evening. And ultimately, that, with that one, that one, the, like, fifth, no, like, 20th craft from that day, that was the Flatwoods craft, right? Uh. According to Frank Fascino's investigations, the same craft is believed to have listed off from Flatwoods only to be forced down again at James Knob near Frametown, West Virginia. Remember Frametown? That's where the other one was, right? So, yet another, that was actually how it was spelled, by the way. <laughs> there was no quote. Uh, another damage craft made it as far west as eastern te- Tennessee. A third damage craft was seen over we- uh, Bluefield, West Virginia. Rescue UFO were apparently what was reported over the West Virginia communities of Heaters and Sutton. Eventually, the damaged UFOs made their way back to the Atlantic Ocean to meet with a larger ship. Uh huh. I may have taken a few liberties with uh, how I presented that information, but I did not make any. I did not make any of that up. I that imagine was, that's how it sounded when they in their head while they were writing it. I imagine that is explicitly how they they sounded when they were writing it and how they sound. Every time they explain it to someone, because here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing with conspiracy theories. Once someone has a conspiracy theory that they like, uh-huh. you don't need to ask them what conspiracy theories they're interested in. They will begin telling you it in breathy, fast speech. Yeah. I know this having experienced people who are interested in conspiracy theories talking to them. Yeah, uh, yeah. This, was mo- this, 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 this presentation may or may not have been modeled after uh-huh. specific – conversations i've had with specific individuals who will not be named (laughs) so if you skipped over that or couldn't follow it don't worry i did my best to kind of sum it up yeah so the assertion of this theory is literally that the flatwoods event was the result of a military action in the gulf of mexico and atlantic oceans resulting in the damage of at least three ufos one of which would land in Flatwoods. Then that UFO would be seen by the Stranger Things kids, take off <laughs> later that night, and then crash again in uh, in Frametown and be seen again the next day uh, by what I can only assume to be main characters in a Stephen King novel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the only problem is it's not in Maine. That's, that's the only thing against it. Um, the same site also suggests that the Flatwoods monster seen was actually an escape craft housing an alien life form, a la a Dalek, as you said before. Yeah. So I think that sounds totally reasonable, right? A hundred percent, yeah. Right? Like, that makes total sense. There's no evidence indicating that this is a fact. Um, there's no reports from the United States military on that. There was no reports on sightings of a large craft over Washington or the Gulf of Mexico, which I want to also point out is a heavily traveled Gulf. Like, yeah. you know, because there's so much trade that happens there, and it would, it you know, there's so much trade that happens there, but it's not unreasonable for a large-scale military operation in which multiple <laughs> military planes were destroyed by disintegration. <laughs> it's totally reasonable that that wasn't so. <laughs> Uh, and keeping in mind, this is 1952, so this is like the beginning of the jet fighter program. So, you know, totally reasonable. Yeah. No, uh, there's nothing. I don't think I don't think there's anything that we can dispute or anything that is disreputable. About no, that it, that uh, that it, report. It, it's totally legitimate. There's nothing wrong with whatever he said. Everything was like. Yeah super real to me um but you know might as well cover a few more theories on this whole thing um there is a small contingency of crazy people who think that it might be some kind of interdimensional being i mean that's bigfoot not not the flatwoods (laughs) monster obviously um Uh, but we've got to at some point touch on the whole trans dimensional bigfoot uh 
Oh, that's going to be an episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had the feeling whoever does that might go insane, though, so let's wait yeah. for, like, Sweeps Week to do that. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it's a Sweeps Week up, yeah. Yeah, because we don't, we, don't we don't want someone to go insane before Sweeps Week. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, that the minor amount of research that I put into that path was too crazy for me. And vast outweighed by alien theories. <laughs> um, so uh -huh. I didn't bother researching that. Are you thinking about becoming a member of MUFON? No. Oh. So I'm not going to. That's that's a path of darkness down which only Zabrowski can lie. You can get a, hat, a shirt and a badge. I know. You can. But uh, I don't need any more hats. I don't need any more shirts. I do need badges, but it seems like a waste to to subscribe to get just a badge um <laughs> so as i mentioned the hyper reputable cryptid wiki before yeah um i thought i'd take a screenshot of the uh the background section on the flatwoods monster at the time of recording yeah because it's one of the funniest uh <laughs> rundowns i've ever seen about a creature ever so, it's kind of like, uh, you know how on, on bios on Wikipedia, they'll like go over the basic stats, like oh, who they married, their family, yeah. nicknames, what they've been in, yada, 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 stuff like that? How? Oh, I'm looking at this now. Okay, so it's exactly as you described. Yep. There's a breakdown. Type, alien slash interdimensional being. First sighting, 1952. Last sighting, 2010s. Country, USA. If they are extraterrestrial slash interdimensional AI, then they likely wouldn't live there. Habitat, probably another planet slash dimension. Possible population, probably high. I have, among ma the many, two large issues with these. One, sure. population, uh, probably high. Yep. Uh, I, that one. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I posted that to Twitter when yeah. I found that because that is a gem. That's yeah. That's 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 that's, that's, that's a clear lack of understanding of estimating a population. That's fantastic. And the and the other thing is, what's the 2010 sighting that they're talking about? I could not figure it out for the life of me. <laughs> I. Th Think, and I'm not sure it might have been a, a mountain monsters reference. Okay. Because I think they talk about it on one episode, but oh. only madness lies down the path of watching mountain monster episodes for me, especially one like this. Because yeah. knowing mountain monsters, it wouldn't have looked like the Flatwoods monster at all, but a, a Sasquatch. So I can see someone writing something like this. This little bio here, and. If there is a Destination Truth or Madden Monsters or anything like that going on, including that as the last sighting, I can see that happening. <laughs> I think that's what happened. Yeah. But I couldn't find any evidence from literally any reputable sources. So we'll just assume that. Also, um, I really like the country tag on that as well. Country and habitat. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> because they're like... USA, although if they are extraterrestrial slash interdimensional beings, they um, wouldn't live. They there. wouldn't live there, so that's not the country they're from. Um, also, their habitat is probably another planet or dimension, depending on whether or not they're an extraterrestrial or interdimensional being. Um, which actually is a weird thing, uh, because doesn't extraterrestrial just mean not of Earth? So wouldn't it interdimensional? also be an extraterrestrial like isn't that like yeah like it's a classification but extraterrestrial is so uh such a catch-all that it would technically include yeah. that as well but, it, it, it's, it's anything that's out from outside of the earth's atmosphere yeah although i guess the argument might be if it's an inter interdimensional being it's technically a member of earth just on a different dimension yeah. but Although I guess astronauts, by that definition, are extraterrestrial. Because well, they are from an, outside the atmosphere. Well, they're in an extraterrestrial state when they're in the space station. But when they yeah. land on Earth, they're terrestrial again. Yeah. So. 
Anywho. So enough of the irrational high I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. It's nothing. This story is a huge, huge, as some would say, nothing burger. Yeah. Um, Air, For- Air Force pilots did show up to investigate it, but, and this is a huge but, it's 1952. They show up to every claim of ETs ever. Yeah. Um, if well, it you know why? The national news media. Because they're real. There's no reason why they would show up unless they were real, John. John, this means it's real. It's real, John. That's why they wouldn't show up for just nothing. You know, not because they're afraid that it might be, you know, a spy operation from the Russian government. Or no. it might be uh, it might be that, oh, hey, aliens do exist. So if aliens exist, that means that we have a legitimate uh, national security problem because that's that's a thing that might we might have to deal with because they have a high enough technology that they can travel through space, which we can't even do properly. No, none of that. No. But, anywho, um, the large craft that was seen through multiple states. Yeah. Probably a meteor. You know why? Because most of the eyewitnesses said I saw a meteor. Mm, I don't know, though. But I don't know. Can they be trusted? Are we I sure mean, they're not agents working for the government to disprove that? I mean... We can't be sure because, but, but Occam's razor says no, they're not. Uh, okay. You do, also, you, John. Also, if it was seen from at least three states, one of them being in Maryland over Baltimore, which is not a small distance from uh, Maryland, Maryland Indians shouldn't be trusted. Just anyone from Maryland there, okay. uh, you know. What I'm trying to say is it was way too high up. Um, the mist, probably fog, like a late night fog, which in, in September is not unusual, even around here. Um, stink the, fog. Well, that's assuming that the fog is the thing that was making the stink. If it was the dog or grass. I make no assumptions. It was an alien sending out stink fog. All right. Well, how about this? Mm, we'll see. Uh, do you know about Taito Alba? Uh, that's Jessica's sister, right? Well, if her sister was an owl. If her sister was a barn owl, yeah. Is her sister a barn owl? Is her sister a foot tall barn owl, Brandon? It's possible. A barn owl. That, that's pretty interesting. I only say that because for, um... For Mothman, mm-hmm. uh, I believe that was, or a barred owl is attributed uh, to that. Not a barn owl, but a barred owl. So that's kind of mm-hmm. fun. They're close in name. Yeah, but they're pretty different. Oh, so they but, got different names. Yeah. So if you take the description uh, at kind of face value, right? Yeah. And you think about, okay, so it was about 10 feet tall, right? Uh-huh. So let's assume that there's a branch that's nine feet off the ground. The barn owl is about a foot tall. Suddenly, there's a creature that's sitting in a branch with a ace-shaped, a rounded face and kind of an ace-shaped cowl from the yeah. you know, feathers around it. Uh, it has eye shine because it's an owl, and owls are known for eye shine. It has two large talons, uh, mainly used for gripping. Uh-huh. Uh that I'm just thinking like... to the the, 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 the the Napoleon Dynamite, you know, the talons. <laughs> large talons. Uh, and it's really good at gliding as well. And if you're not if you're not paying attention, if you're already in a heightened state of freaking out, it might look like, I don't know, someone wearing a dress. Because the feathers from behind it are just kind of yeah. blowing. Uh-huh. Uh Additionally, now I don't know if you've ever heard of Barnell in person. I think I have actually. Um, 
barn owls they uh they hiss oh do they yeah shoot Let's and uh see. i'll have a link in the show notes of that yeah let me do a quick uh quick a thingamajig and do uh something like this Which, you know, kind of sounds like rockets or something like that shooting off. So, yeah. Yeah. I, listen. That's, I, uh, I like what you said about rockets. There's a good hit. Yeah. Kind of hiss they got going on there. Yeah. So, I'm not saying that it was definitely a bar now. I'm just saying that Occam's Razor tells me. Barn owls are common to the region. It's a possibility that a barn owl could have been a Blackwoods monster. Um, I don't think, and let me point this out, I don't think the kids or Kathleen were hoaxing. I think that the kids misidentified a meteor going over a hilltop, thought it landed there. Then there was some kind of light blinking that now they're in a state of mind where they think that a UFO has crash landed. UFO fever is a thing in the 1950s. So they go over to, they go get their family. Everyone's hyped up, amped up because I've been there. I've been in a situation where someone comes and says something's happening and I go along with it. Yeah. And they well, reach. Sometimes even you just have to yes. And yeah. So I think that this is just a colossal yes. And, and human memory is a malleable thing. And when you have a lot of adrenaline running through your system, you don't always see the thing that you think you're seeing. Yeah. Which, you know, honestly, the whole set of circumstances for this particular sighting just really point towards it's probably a barn owl and a meteor. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, because, as we said before, the Flatwoods Monster is a super popular cryptid. Uh-huh. Um... It has a legitimately huge cultural impact. Right on. I like it. I like when I like when, when they affect culture. Because it, yeah. it's just sort of cool to see how that happens. So, weirdly, the place that it's biggest, yeah. Japan. No. Like, <laughs> not even really? joking. And That's pretty when cool. I started when I like started doing this section, I was like, wait, that was the Flatwoods monster? Wait, yeah. what? It's everywhere. So First things first, Majora's Mask, from Miami Branch, there's a, uh, um, there's an event that you, one of the characters is, uh, not Anju, but the little, the little girl from the ranch. Yeah. Um, she's convinced that aliens have been abducting the cows, right? Okay. Um, so there's a quest in which you can, uh, Basically, protect the cows from being abducted by aliens. Uh-huh. Uh, Crimea, that's the name of the girl. Um, and what happens is the Flatwoods monster lands on the ranch, and you have to basically kill as many of them as possible before they steal the cow and abduct Crimea. <laughs> it, it's a legitimate, like, it's legit. And for years, I I played that I played that game when it first came out. I never yeah. knew that it was the Flatwoods monster, but now that I look <laughs> at the image, it's clearly the Flatwoods monster. Yeah, yeah. Right um, I think I have a picture of it on one of these. I don't have it in the the show notes. Uh huh. Um, the creatures are known as the Others, as well, because that just doesn't make it ominous, uh, mm -hmm. ominous at all. No, oh yeah, you're right. I, I'm looking at that uh, the image of the uh, from Majora's Mask. Yeah, you're right. It's it's the Flatwoods monster. Yeah. Um. Additionally, it appeared in multiple. Uh, That's a hundred percent the Flatwoods monster. Oh, by yeah. the way, well, because it's not even like a little here's bit. The, here's the thing: Flatwoods monster represents is like a huge icon in. Uh, uh, like it's it's a huge staple of alien folklore in Japan, alien lore and alien like culture. 
Like it's it's yeah. practically the the role model for it. Because like even when we went to uh, the Japanese bookstore a while back, yeah, the magazine that I showed you had the Flatwoods monster on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Like it's also been the final boss of an NES game by the name of Amagon, and it was uh-huh. a stage two boss in Space Harrier. It also has a collection of soft booby toys. Um, there's like model kits that you can buy, garage kits you can buy. There is a crazy amount of uh, Japanese Flatwoods monster paraphernalia. Yeah. Um, additionally, it appears in Fallout 76, but uh, apparently that was not a good game, and I still have yet to play it. <laughs> I'll probably never play it. Um, but at the end of the day, this story is kind of like the Dover Demon to me. Uh-huh. Uh, because a lot of the, the peripheral discussion around it and, like, the events are kind of similar to the Dover Demon in that it was a quick sighting, I shine, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Um, the legend kind of spread. There was more, a few more sightings. But the question of whether they're reputable or not is there. And, you know, you're not really sure what it is. Although, in this mm-hmm. case, it's a little bit more cut and dry as being some kind of owl to me. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah. Um, however... Unlike the Dover Demon and yeah. the Enfield Horror, uh, it's been totally embraced by members of the town of, uh, of Flatwoods. Oh, right on. Cool. There's there's a sign that says, Welcome to Flatwoods, Home uh-huh. of the Green Monster. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. It was erected outside of the town, so as you enter the town, you see it. Uh, uh-huh. There's a three-day festival called Flatwoods Day, which celebrates wow. the legend annually. That's um, cool. And I read another thing where there's like three – chair like five chairs that are around town if you take uh-huh. pictures of, the, of all five of them and bring them to like the the community center they give you yeah. like a free uh patch or something that's cool i'd yeah. do that so it, it's it's like i think it's one of those things where it's harmless enough it's a part of the local lore it's a part uh-huh. of like the cultural zeitgeist now mm-hmm. um and at the end of the day i legitimately just think it was a misidentification and people got super stoked for it yeah well it's pretty cool yeah yeah i mean it's it's also a harmless story too which also in the interesting thing that someone pointed out uh, i think it was the center for skeptical inquiry article i read uh-huh um there was a this is actually before abductions became a thing in ufo stories uh-huh which is why the Flatwoods monster didn't abduct because it was before uh, uh, the Benny Hill, yeah. uh, the Hills abduction, which was like uh-huh. the first major one, and then all of a sudden after that happened, abductions became common. Big, yeah. Which I still think that that one there that's a whole another that's a whole episode into its own right. If we ever do more, if we do more alien stuff, that's definitely going to be one yeah. that we should talk about. I think if you're craving to know about that story, there's a last podcast on it currently, mm-hmm. and there's probably a billion other sto- podcasts that did it. But, yeah. So, but um, but yeah, it's interesting to see how lore evolves based on other stories that appear. Because mm-hmm. until once once one story comes out and it becomes popular, you suddenly start to see it affect multiple stories. Like the same thing happened with Sasquatch, right? Yeah. After after Sasquatch was suddenly a hairy creature that was basically a uh, bipedal gorilla mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes, uh, suddenly the story changes. And, you know, after yeah. someone sees this, the story changes. After this happens, the story changes. And culturally speaking, we're kind of magpies, right? Yeah. We take the bits and pieces we like from everyone else's stories and create new stories and mutate yeah. the stories to fit that. Well, it's... UFOs used to never be described as saucers. And then there was a first instance. I, I'm drawing a blank. It's a, it's a really famous one, but I'm drawing a big fat blank. When it was yeah. first described as a saucer shape. And it was the a... next thing you know, they're everywhere. Yeah. And, and like the, the, whatchamacallit, the little green men, yeah. design of it was like there, there someone mentioned it and it changed suddenly overnight like it went from yeah. like kind of vaguely humanoid like vaguely mm-hmm. just basically just people to being suddenly the greats yeah 
So, and and the same thing happens in uh, cryptid folklore as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Loch Ness monster is commonly thought of as a plesiosaur, but a lot of the descriptions of plesiosaur of the Loch Ness monster are more like a sea serpent, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. the Yeti is described as being brown in most cases, but mm -hmm. suddenly it's now a white and blue Bigfoot. Yeah. So it, it it's interesting how things change because, you know, a black and white film will depict it as having a white fur because that's more interesting to look at than a black fur animal, yeah. right? And I don't know. I just I find that the evolution of folklore to be very interesting in regards yeah. to stuff like this. Uh, it's pretty cool. Which is is kind of what this story like this whole podcast is about in a weird way is just yeah things have mutated in a strange interesting way and it's more helpful to not take things at face value and mm -hmm. to take them as a part of like a cultural zeitgeist that evolves over time so yeah but i don't have anything else about the flatwoods monster i'm kind of disappointed in how little there is on the flatwoods monster i'm impressed on how i mean we've got an hour and a half out of this puppy off of one sighting. There was it, one sighting. Oh, but the problem is it's never the sighting. It's never the... I found that most of our stories are not about the cryptid. Yeah. It's about the people around the cryptid and about the things that they create, the things they build around the cryptid. Like last yeah. week with the Oren Pangdak. Oh, and Debbie um, Martyr. Yeah. yeah. It was more <laughs> about the story of looking for it than, oh yeah, yeah it's Harry Danny DeVito. Yeah. Which I think is now the fifth episode we've mentioned. In, you know. uh, I wouldn't be surprised. And then, like, uh, the rope in. <sighs> Don't say his name, John. Don't do it. Don't I'm do it. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, after the rope, the rope in episode was literally not about a pterodactyl, but a person who had an agenda. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just interesting because really at the end of the day, we can describe the creature, but because mm -hmm. they're cryptids and because they, they we don't have any information about how they live their life, like credible information, and yeah. how they exist in the world and what their biology is and things like that, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of meat on those bones. No, not really. But the people who look into them, the people who research them and study them, that's where the real legitimate story is for all these yeah things. so but anywho i think it's time to do our plugs oh boy so um i don't copy the plugs to mine <laughs> um all right here we go so uh as always if you want to get in contact with us uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com. On Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. Twitter, at cryptopediacast as well. Uh, our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. All these links, as always, are underneath the Sasquatch on our website. Um, although the cryptopediacast one is in the show notes, so, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, we do have a Patreon, as always. Uh, there's three tiers on there today. First tier is just a supporter. Uh, hoop snakes. Call that hoop snakes. Uh, second tier is uh, what is hodags? That? hodags. Yeah, Two hodags. Dollars. You get to read all our copies. We include pictures. We've got links. We've got YouTube videos, all interspersed throughout our uh, our, our copies that you can read if, uh, at the two dollar level. Mine also has citations. In Ooh. I've been working on I've been working on citing my sources more. Um, yeah. Although it's not MLA certified at all, so if you're trying to grade my paper, I'm not going to be doing great. <laughs> it's more just so you know where things are. It's just um, the links to where we got everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we also have a jackalope tier. Jackalopes. Which gets you access to our audio content. Brandon's oh, yeah. been producing a little bit more than I have, but uh, I'm looking I'm looking at some stories that I might be covering in the near future. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if I ever do a follow up on the Flatwoods monster and I look into the more cryptid side of it, 
that'll mm-hmm. probably be a bonus episode on there. So, or so, if I read any more theories on the Flatwood Monster, that'll probably be yeah. a bonus episode. <laughs> um, and uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, feel free to send them. As we we've already gotten a few of those, um, and I think at least one of them's in the pipeline currently. Um, so, we we also are looking for creepy pasta and crypto pasta for me to yell scream at you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to not yell scream on the main podcast after the roping for at least a year. Uh, <laughs> so if you ever see the uh, Moco Memble, that's gonna be a yell scream episode for sure. Uh huh. But we'll 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 wait a few we'll wait a few episodes before we uh, unleash that one. Um. Well, yeah, so that's that's it for the, the podcast itself. Uh, Brandon, mm-hmm. you got some plugs? You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is voyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon, capital C, capital B. Um, as always, my Instagram is at mu2057. Transformers and cat pics will continue indefinitely. Um <laughs> My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website will probably never come back unless I start looking for a job. <laughs> uh, my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Um, and uh, I, I guess I do have that, that resume website I was talking about, but uh, yeah. apparently that's not working so great, so I got to take a look at that. <laughs> oh. Our art is done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Yeah. I'd yawned uh, about 90% less that time. <laughs> <laughs>